Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, a new interview series by the Prog Space, where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Hi everyone, uh, Uncle Prog here, Rune, and I'm here with uh, one of my favorite artists from last year, really who released an album in December of 2020, Paul Sadler. And hi, Paul. Nice to hey. have you <laughs> have you here. No, yeah. thank you very much for, for inviting me on. I'm uh, very yeah. pleased to be here. <laughs> Hope you are doing doing well over there in the UK and, uh, and that you're ready to talk a little bit about your music and your... Uh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. We, um, I'm, I'm doing perfectly fine, to be honest, uh, all things considered. And uh, yeah, always ready to talk about music. So <laughs> Yeah, great, great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. first I wanted to congratulate you on the release of uh, the first album, Soon To Be Absorbed. It's been out for like three months now or something. Yeah, it's out this... the 1st of first of December. Exactly right, yeah. So uh, yeah, three months, just, just about, yeah. Yeah, How so... Now, looking back at it, you've had some time to, to take it in, you know, since uh, the fans got to <laughs> experience your music. How has the reception been, do you feel? And, and are you happy with the attention the album has received? I'm, I've been thrilled, to be honest, yeah. Um, I It's one of those things when you make an album, you you lose all sense of objectivity with it, you know, so... Uh, hmm. Um, pretty much as soon as the actual kind of recording process starts, you just kind of you, you saw it absorbed in it. No pun intended, but you saw it involved in it. Let's say that that you know you you kind of completely lose track of whether whether this album is actually any good or whether it's just you know <laughs> it's just rubbish or some kind of vanity project or whatever. Mm. Um, so it's a funny one. Whilst you don't you don't want to pay too much attention to reviews and, and and stuff like that and it's always quite gratifying when you start to see them come in and and uh, you know the reviews have been i think pretty much without fail have been really really positive um yeah you know uh which have been I've, it, it is a relief i'd be lying if i said it wasn't because like i say you know you of just, course you just, of you, course you have, yeah you have no idea so um and then yeah just general comments from people um it seems to have gone down really well with, with fans and, and, and such like so uh, so yeah, no, were, sorry, you, yeah. were you were you surprised at all uh, about because I feel like it's it's over the line that you say the reviews have been you know quite quite uh, impressed with with the album and and mm. you had a lot of like uh, top scores or at least up there mm. mm-hmm. so so are, were you surprised at all by the, that reception from the the <laughs> music press or. Well, it's it, yes and no. I mean, obviously, when you're writing, it, it's funny because you, you become two different people. When you're writing the music, you, you you're thinking it's the greatest thing that's mankind has ever created, you know. Because otherwise, you wouldn't write it, you know. <laughs> you know, mm, if, if, of if course, yeah, yeah. If you didn't think that, you'd you'd, you'd do something else, or, you know. So when you're writing it, you're thinking, yeah, this is really good. I'm really happy with this, and um, you know, I can't wait to get this out there and stuff. Um, and then, as I say, over time, over the recording, over listening to it over and over again, mixing it, um, hmm. it you just you just tend to lose that that objectivity and that that, that sense. So, you know, the, the, the person who I was when I was writing it would say, no, I'm not surprised. I agree. I think it's great. <laughs> yeah. the, the person who I am now, yeah, I would say I'm a little surprised. I'm, I'm, but, but happily so. And, and you know, I'm... I'm and in a way, grateful that that people have given it the time of day because obviously, whilst Spires, who I'm sure you'll we'll talk about shortly, but whilst Spires has yeah, a certain, will, yeah. <laughs> certain name to them, um, without being a, a huge band or anything, really, uh, what I discovered was I couldn't rely on that to get any attention hmm. for for the album in itself. You know, maybe a little bit. Um, so it did feel a little bit like starting from scratch. So just the fact that people have paid it some attention and 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 it's and it's been received so well is is as i say it is a relief but yeah it, i would say it's probably a surprise to an extent as well yeah yeah I, I think you know like you said spires is of course not not uh, uh a, a 
big band, but you guys have a, a, a decent following and mm-hmm. you have a history, right? So mm-hmm. with this new album, you're you're sort of like you said, starting over with mm-hmm. with just just your name and and mm-hmm. a music that is of course not not uh, unfamiliar if you know Spires, but it's it's its own thing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I'm I'm guessing like you people who watch this there might be people who don't know you or who mm-hmm. haven't listened to the album so mm-hmm. uh, i know it's a difficult question but how would you yourself categorize your your music and would you put it in like the rock or or the metal genre mm-hmm. or is that like not not that interesting for you to to categorize it like that well it's it's interesting because I, I keep asking myself the same question um but it but it's it's interesting. I would say it's interesting, but not important, you know? So for, mm. for me, yeah, it's, it's, um, I, I, I can't really remember when I started writing it, what I was intending to write. Was I intending to be more of a metal album or a, a rock album? I suppose it, I, I knew it was going to be much lighter than Spires. Uh, otherwise I probably would have just written a, <laughs> written a Spires album. But, um, the, the, I I would class it really as more of a, 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 a as a progressive rock album, but with with metal tendencies, I suppose. If, if yeah. I had to, um, but also obviously, uh, you know, as, as lots of people picked up on, and uh, it has a lot of uh, folk influences and, and general acoustic Definitely, yeah. uh, music and stuff like that. So it's it's certainly a lot lighter than than any album, maybe aside from the acoustic album we did with Spires. Um, a lot lighter than anything I've I've released in the past. So yeah, yeah. Because I wanna I wanna touch a little bit on that because you you mentioned you know when you started writing this stuff you you intended it to be at least somewhat different mm-hmm. than Spires. Mm-hmm. So when you started writing this, is is this something? Is this music that that has like a, a long past that you? Right, wrote while Spires were, were you were still were working on Spires stuff, or is it yeah. stuff that happened after the release of uh, the last Spires album? Yeah, basically the the um, it, I I would say probably before I decided to put Spires on on, on hold for a little bit, um, I had maybe two or three songs already written um, that I already knew. Well, I think it became obvious whilst writing them that they weren't Spires songs. Um, mm. So, you know, I kind of had this idea in the back of my mind, oh, maybe at some point I'll do something with them. I, I don't think I thought of the idea of a of a solo album as such, but mm-hmm. I just thought at some point, um, you know, I'll do something with them. And then obviously when Spires did uh, go on a bit of a, a break, um, obviously that just accelerated the process and, and kind of got me thinking, okay, well, what, what else am I going to do? Um, cause obviously I was getting a bit, I, I suppose I'm quite fickle <laughs> in a certain sense, yeah. uh, uh, in, in that I, I don't like to do the same thing for, for too long. I like to keep changing things. That's a fickle or maybe capricious. That's a more, um, <laughs> yeah, a more I see, com- yeah. complimentary word, you know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I like to have lots of different things on, on the go and different interests and different, uh, things that I'm trying to do. So, uh, really, yeah, the, the, these songs in themselves, just when when Spires kind of uh, went on hold, the, the, it was just like, okay, well, I'm going to bury myself in this now, and 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 the rest of the album got written fairly quickly, actually. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 going to come back to Spires, of course, mm-hmm. because there's an interesting band to discuss as well. But mm-hmm. but uh, can I ask these uh, early songs? Then did you were there ever a point where you were like these might be Spires material, or was there um, how to put it? Uh, did you ever? Yeah. What and also what was this? What were these first songs? Do you feel like that the early stuff? And the later stuff you wrote is like, is there a uh, progress there? Is there a change there of the material you, yeah, you wrote well, the f- towards the, the end of the... The first one I wrote was The the Fear, which is um, probably one of the more Spires-esque tunes in the sense exactly, that... Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it could fit into a Spires thing, or at least the, the main themes and, and motifs of it could do, obviously. There, had are, it been yeah, Spires there tune, are parts would, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would have taken it in a different direction had it been a Spires tune. But I think sometimes giving something a different name 
especially when it's your own, uh, is, all, <laughs> is all you really need to um, to give you a, a new sense of what it is and a new almost excitement about it. And that's the thing, you know, that word excitement is so crucial because you have to be excited by what you're doing. And, and um, I think I think the, yeah, the, the, the prospect of doing something different uh, was obviously for me was just so much more appealing than just, yeah. Kind of going, okay, right, you know, at that time, you know, uh, things changed. But at that time, you know, I, I didn't necessarily just want to start writing another another Spires album. So You felt more inspired by the thought of, of doing something different. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is, I think, I think if a lot of bands were being honest, uh, bands that have been going a long time who are very popular would probably say the same thing, but you get stuck in, in, in a... a you, you you almost feel like you have to do something and it's it, you know it's the great thing about spies not being a, a big band is that well there's no pressure there if i don't want to do it for yeah. a while don't do it you know do something else so um, yeah but but even yeah. even bigger bands like you say they go on hiatus or mm-hmm. look at catatonia they had this uh, break where they obviously needed to rethink what mm-hmm. they were doing and also i think what you're describing now is like certain bigger bands or like if not bigger bands then they rethink their whole musical strategy and they Mm. suddenly change their, you know, it's like if you said that, you know, I'd I'd like the next Spires album to sound quite different than the Mm. previous ones. Mm -hmm. So that's, of course, a challenge to the fans and to the band and everything. And Mm -hmm. and sometimes people ask, you know, why didn't they just change their name Mm -hmm. or do it as a solo album? So I'm, I'm like thinking, is there... And would you ever have considered or did you ever consider, you know, releasing this as a Spires album or like taking Spires in a different direction? Um, yes. Um, in fact, you know, before before the release of the last Spires album, I was already thinking uh, before it was kind of fully written. And, and you know, I was already thinking, oh, do I want to do something different with this? But then the songs kind of took on their own, uh, you know, I... I at the end of the day, you do have a certain style of writing, and and sometimes songs write themselves. And and I think with yeah. the parting gift, which is the, the last Spies album, uh, it did. You know, I, I, which I'm is probably my favourite one, and I'm really really happy with how it how it turned out. And so, it, I think I might have entertained the idea that maybe these could be like a different direction for Spies. But again, like I said before, when you put a different name on something. It's only a, it's only a name, but it but sometimes that can just be the spark that you need to to, to feel excited about it again and exactly. to go, you know, yeah. So, um, so yeah, you know, the the, the prospect of just doing something a, a, a different project uh, is kind of had me salivating a little bit and thinking, yeah, you know? exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'd love to hear a little bit more about you know you already went into the creative process of you writing these songs and and what about the recording pro process i know you uh produced and engineered and mastered this uh, not, uh yeah uh, not mastered I, so produced engineered and mixed it yeah and then um someone i got someone else to master it because i yeah have not, no idea what i'm doing when it comes to mastering but um, exactly yeah like you did with the spires albums right you produced engineered and mix mix those mm-hmm. yeah exactly so yeah this the the so the, the recording process for, for this one uh it was pretty smooth, actually. The um, and it was timed very well because obviously mm. you may have not you may have noticed we're in the middle of a, a global pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah unfortunately, you know. Uh, so um, we 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 got the drums done just before lockdown came in in in, in UK. Uh, I uh, think if we'd have done it a couple of weeks later, we wouldn't have been able to to do it. So I see. Was, I see. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, it was to- a guy Tom Rice who was in another band called Conum who um, yeah, <laughs> just re- released their album. Yeah, they're releasing their album today as today. we're filming this. The, their their mm-hmm. debut album is being released. Yeah, yeah, exactly. and he did the drums on on, on your in on uh, your album. Exactly right. Yeah, so he's a, he's a fantastic drummer, and, and the way it worked with him, um, he's just so professional as well. You know, I uh, I gave him the demos. I think as most people do these days, you know, the the, the songwriter will usually put some rudimentary programmed yeah, drums together, on that yeah. stuff. Exactly, just to give an idea. Uh, and I kind of sent them to him and, and said, uh, you know, um, 
there you go. And he pretty much just went, he pretty much threw that in the bin and went, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to that pretty much. He, he, he more or less no. his first message to me was, I've not really listened to it much to the, the I listened to it once because I wanted to get a fresh idea on it. And as a songwriter, obviously your, your immediate response to that is to go, oh no, uh, you know, what, yeah. what, what's he going to do? But it's, yeah, you had something in your head, right? To, yeah, exactly. With those, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you think, well, you can, you can play around with it, but as long as it's, pretty much that <laughs> you know and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so you you know but that's actually something that's taken me a long time to learn and I've been told it thousands of times but you know let go a little bit and actually trust other musicians to, to, to know what yeah. they're doing you know um, I, I, I'm not proud to say it but I, I would definitely accept that in the past I've, I've, I can be a little bit of a control freak with, with, with music mm. you know you, you have your idea and um, sometimes that can actually work out really well, <laughs> but 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 I think um, slowly but surely I am learning to 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 to, to trust other people's uh, musical judgment, you know. And well, uh, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. Sorry. I guess when you have someone like Tom coming in and you know exceeding the expectations, that also helps with. You know, like you say, your your uh, wish to to mm. to know control everything. Now you see that exactly, yeah. he came in and he added something to to the album that maybe you wouldn't have been able to add on your own. So so I don't know if that's something that sort of changes your mind a little bit about it, well, uh, it, it does definitely and you know it, 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 it kind of contributes to your, your evolution as a um a musician yeah. but also i suppose in a way is not to get too you know philosophical but as a person as well <laughs> you know you, you 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 kind of learn to go you know i'm I, I i there's no reason why i'm should know these kind of things better than than him especially about drums i'm not a drummer you know he he is so why would yeah. he, he he put in a better have better ideas about things and yeah and we did all the drums in, in one day essentially in the studio we went went in the night before and, and set up the, the the kit and all that and then just blasted them out in a day um and which is you know as a as a again as a, as a songwriter and someone who's going through the whole pr production of an album is, is a dream really it's that's that's exactly what yeah. you want you know um and then um, Al on, on, on bass was a, equally just a really nice, uh, and again, well-timed. We managed to get that in just in between the lockdowns. Of, uh, oh, yeah. Um, and, yeah, again, it was it was a little bit more trial and error than, than for the drums uh, in the sense that he kind of came in with very specific ideas for the bits that he knew he wanted to kind of, expand you know, on or expand yeah. on exactly and yeah. then the rest of it a lot of it was kind of okay well let's let's just try things out try that uh, i'm not so sure about that and then what about this oh yeah that works well um we we certainly didn't there was no pressure to be thinking about playing it live because whilst and again you're probably gonna ask and, me about this but you know <laughs> and, and and now we're of course talking about alex jolly who's also the the bass player for spires Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Which was a, which was an obvious choice because I I, I knew that I wanted fretless bass because uh, I, I I just loved the sound of it. Um, yeah. And he, uh, yeah, he's, he's just great. He's always been sort of great to work with and stuff like. That. So it, it was just a, it, well, it wasn't even really a choice. It was just obvious that that was going to be that was going to be mm. it. Um, What's going to yeah. be the man for the job? Uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 So, but you also have you also have uh, more uh, guest performers on the album. You know, uh, uh, Raphael Wayne Roth Brown doing the cellos, mm -hmm. and then you have mm -hmm. Andrew Allmark on the violin, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, how that how how did you get in touch with those guys, and and how did, did that happen to for well, them to be on the album? So uh, Andrew's a friend of mine from from uh, Wakefield. We actually known each other a very long time but he, he lives in Oman uh, these days mm -hmm. you know which is uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so but I, 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 he's always been an incredibly good violinist so uh, he's actually played on I think one by as well I think he played yeah The Whisperer um, he played in a few tracks yeah. on that so um, but yeah he's, he's, he's just he's, he's an old friend so that seemed uh, an obvious thing to do there um, and then with Raphael uh, who I suppose most people know through Leprous, although he has, of course, yeah, and his, uh, yeah, uh, his many projects, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, it's incredible. Also re released an, a solo album last year, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Raphael, yeah, 
Exactly, yeah, and and he's just such a talented guy. Um, uh, I've seen I've seen him playing with Leprous quite a few times live, and always been you know the way he opens up the show and stuff. He's just a, obviously yeah. incredibly talented. Uh, and I think when when Spires did the prog power pre party a few years ago, there was a little talk of um, you know we had a brief exchange about. Uh, possibly doing something yeah, there, yeah. Which, which never materialised, but it didn't end up happening. But the the kind of the contact had been made. So uh, when I was looking for a cellist, um, I just thought, well, sod it, you know, might as well. <laughs> might yeah, as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And he, he agreed to do it. And again, he just a, a great person to work with. Very um, obviously, again, I'd written the string parts, but. Um, but with that, with that kind of caveat of um, less so that you know, in in a, in a sense, I was I, I was quite happy for, for for the strings to 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 change a little bit if needed, yeah. Uh, and and because you know, it's um, I'm sure again, I'm sure that, that that they would have a better idea of what what, what yeah, might work. Like, but, uh, yeah. like you said with the drums, right? You know, mm-hmm. you 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 write what you are hearing in your head in a way, and they but they are the violinist and cellist. Exactly. They, might exactly. have uh, ideas for you on on, exactly on, right. on improvements or or changes, yeah. yeah. And certainly, and, and certainly there was. I mean, there's there's certain parts with on the, on the cello specifically where um, where Raphael kind of did a lot of say doubling in different octaves. Mm. And uh, at the end of the last track, um, there's a whole kind of uh, lovely pad thing that he does with with these waving lines coming in yeah. and out of it right at the end of the track, which which wasn't my idea at all, you know, and and so. You know, yeah. um, it, that's really nice, and and it's it's just nice when you, you have something like that, and you say, you know, because I suppose he could have just gone played what I've given him, and then right there you go. But it's nice to see when a musician really puts that wants to put their own stamp on. Yeah, yeah. I guess I guess that's a bit different with a project like yours, or in in this vein of like uh, progressive rock and metal. Uh, like if you if you look at that up against like studio musicians if you hired like a studio mu- musician i guess you would be pretty sure that he would play exactly what you told him mm. and more or less nothing else right because that's sort of his job and he does day it's, out yeah. and day in and but with this you have like performers that are mm. you know composers in their own right mm. and they all wanted to they heard something and they wanted to add something exactly, to, to yeah. your project yeah exactly and it's really nice, which is really nice it's really it makes it more of a collective vision as well which i think is is always going to be even for a solo album it, a solo album is never or at least should never just be one person's yeah. narrow vision of a thing i think you know the more influences you can get within that is is, is i is, think you're i think you're very be. right in that mm. because uh, you know i talked to uh steve hackett of genesis mm. just a little while ago and you know he has released i don't know 26 mm. solo albums yeah, or something yeah. and i guess we talked a little bit about that how every album is different a lot of because of the musicians he worked with mm-hmm. it's like different on each album exactly. and even though you know he's the unifying you know core of the of, of, of all his albums mm-hmm. the fact that you work with different people will create a different uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. a different mm-hmm. setting a different sound a different yeah outcome. exactly well, it, yeah. It, it has to doesn't it necessarily so you know it's yeah exactly that's it so um uh yeah and and again just just that that thing of collaborating with different people is is it's it's fun as well that's the other thing about it you know it's it's fun it's it's enjoyable yeah so um well moving on i have a i want to ask you of course hopeless to give a straight answer to what i'm going to ask you now because (laughs) of the circumstances we are in at this time but Mm. could you see yourself playing songs from this album in a live setting at some point Uh, and and if you were to do that how like if you were to pick from the top shelf of how you want to present this Mm. music live uh, what how what is the way you would do it yeah, it's something I have obviously thought about uh, quite a lot, um, and like you say, we're very limited in options. But like, but uh, but in an ideal world, yes, uh, I would love to. And there's several different ways I could do it. I mean, part of the reason the album ended up being so acoustic based um, was because 
I was, in, to a certain extent, trying to get together um, a set list of songs that I could just turn up somewhere and, and play on an acoustic guitar because I really like the yeah. idea of, of being able to do that. Um, sometimes, uh, much as I like playing live, sometimes it can be quite... <laughs> I don't want to use the word stressful, but it can be quite, um, it's just a logistical, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, um, uh, you know, I I do really like the idea of just uh, sometimes just, just turning up somewhere with an acoustic guitar and, and, and Mm -hmm. performing in that way. Uh, And I would say, how many songs are on the album? Eight. I would say that probably six of those songs would be, would be doable in that way you know yeah possible um, to do mm. yeah and, and work really well and in fact some of them i already have done um, yeah or maybe but, uh, maybe just do it with a, a a violinist or a cellist with you on exactly. stage or yeah that's it well that's the thing that's it so there's there's these different levels and, and and i quite like that flexibility there's different levels there's there's just me and a guitar there yeah. is getting a, a, a string section which i think would just be a violinist and a cellist um there would be you know Al, Alex Jolly could could join me on on, on bass, yeah. um, and then I suppose you know, yeah, drum and you could do, wise, yeah, and you, you know, could we'll do see. yeah, like a mm. acoustic set with with also with a drummer and a bassist, right? And exactly, and then you could go <laughs> fully electric in the exactly, end, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. so so it's just all the possibilities, and I'd love to. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and yeah. see what. Um, obviously the. It also depends, for example, drum wise on particularly on, on on what people are doing. It you know Tom obviously is quite busy with with his mm. other band and stuff like that. So it's all it's all logistics again there. But I'd love to um, to a certain extent, I suppose uh, it would be the kind of thing that would be nice to do a a big almost a, a, a delayed release uh, <laughs> show. You know, a big, exactly, a big one off yeah. show where you get uh, everyone in. Um, obviously, I'm not going to fly Raphael over from Canada <laughs> but uh, you know uh, I'm not so no, but you would <laughs> you could you would get you would perhaps get a cell list and exactly. yeah, yeah to exactly. be able to perform it more or less uh, as on the album yeah I'd love to do that yeah 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 at some point yeah, yeah. if you are enjoying this interview please head over to theprogspace.com for more reviews articles pictures and interviews all about progressive music You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, theprogspace.com. I want to go a little bit into your, you sort of your, what can I say, upbringing and your your musical history and everything, you know, but a, a lot of people say that they a lot of musicians say that they have like this one album or this one performance or event that they that sort of made them think you know oh i want to pick up the guitar or oh i want to be a singer or something do you have something like that in your past (laughs) from when you were a kid oh i don't know if i could i don't know if i could narrow it down to one thing um i mean i if i think back to when i started getting really obsessed with music um yeah it was largely the, the the bands that I really started to. Yeah, it would mainly largely be around a lot of the grunge type era, you know. So, yeah. um, and still. But that be- sort of that sort of leads me into another part of the question then because mm-hmm. i was like thinking about so now now if you if you you of course uh spires and and your solo album mm-hmm. will have to say it's 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 related to rock and metal and mm-hmm. it's also related to progressive music so mm-hmm. you know what made you when did you discover these genres and what were like the the albums or the artists that mm. metal artists and prog artists and <laughs> That that led you into that on that road that you are. Well, yeah. So that's a, um, so going from, for example, as I say, that I was I was quite into into grunge. You mentioned and, grunge, and, yeah, yeah, and and particularly the 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 albums that stand out to me from that that genre was. I mean, my favorite still to, to this day, easily in my top five albums is, is Soundgarden, Super Unknown. And if you listen mm. to that, it's you know, I defy anyone to tell me that's not a progressive album. It's 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 a hugely progressive album, and you know, whatever kind of music I've listened to, I've always liked it to have a progressive edge. And I think actually the word progressive gets discussed a hell of a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah, and I wouldn't go as far as to say it's a 
it's not a how to how to say this as a genre it's it's an unusual word for a genre in a way because I you agree. know the, yeah. the, the, there's there's so much music that is progressive that isn't prog if that makes sense um so mm. you know um the and and likewise there's probably a lot of of, of, of let's call it prog that probably isn't particularly progressive um you know, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you know just having time sign- lots of time signatures and and widdly widdly stuff doesn't necessarily make something progressive and i don't want to yeah say or anything. or yeah. or recreating uh music that sounds like exactly something from the 70s or, or exactly, 90s exactly, yeah. doesn't exactly necessarily that, yeah. make it progressive still within no. the genre if you put the stamp jaw the genre on it but mm-hmm. i see what you what you say but you know you know, and I, and I wouldn't. Uh, I, I'm not going to discuss uh, Soundgarden uh, being a progressive band with you because I totally agree. I think there are mm. so many elements on their albums that are are rightly so can be construed as progressive music. So so yeah. no discussions there. Yeah, yeah exactly. What about then, sorry. what about more heavier heavier music then? Yes. Because of course, uh, Spires is quite uh, is a extreme yeah, exactly. metal band as they say today yeah. in a way so yeah yeah so my gateway into that would probably be oh, as i imagine it's for so many people probably the, the first heavy band that i got into was probably pantera uh you know oh, yeah. um, <laughs> um vulgar display of power specifically was was i guess the first album that i bought that was a step up in terms of Mm. heaviness you know from from pure aggression and yeah. exactly yeah and it was a you know i loved it and then uh obviously lots of bands who as you usually do you start with the bigger bands don't you so pantera and, and uh, certain slayer albums um mm-hmm. well to be honest to be honest just raining blood actually <laughs> but, uh, um <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but uh you know um you know the metallicas and stuff like that but then yeah, from yeah, there yeah. obviously where where that really started to take a more progressive approach was, and this will surprise no one, Opeth, uh, you know, yeah. um, anyone who knows my music will, I, will know that I uh, I struggle to lose a certain Opeth influence in, in, in the music. Not that I try to, but, um, you know, so, so Opeth really, I think, when they were in their peak period of, you know, still life, Blackwater Park, uh, was, yeah. was, was, for me, was they were hugely influential on my songwriting um would you say that that is your sort of your first meeting with progressive music as well in more in a you know i won't disagree that there are progressive elements to a lot of these bands mm-hmm. you mentioned you know but uh, at the same time you know the, the if you look at more like you can say straight up this is a, a prog- progressive band like mm-hmm. Opeth is yeah. and and was I would say, Is I would that, say, prob- I yeah. would say, probably that was that that was my entrance into into uh, yeah, if, if you if you want to call it prog um, or prog metal, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that would be it would be doing them a disservice to to to, to try and think too hard if it was if there was anyone else because it, I'm, I'm pretty sure Opeth were the the band for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So so that was a, a inspiration for you in of course in creating your own music, but at the same time I guess you know it's it's weird because i remember when i reviewed the first spires album i uh said you know of course i i'm i'm sure i'll hear many people uh, comparing you guys to uh opeth mm-hmm. but for me it was like a uh <laughs> i think i said if wishbone ash wrote <laughs> a extreme metal album yeah, so yeah, yeah. i've always i've always wanted to ask you if you have any if you if you you know are a fan of wishbone nash or if you know the band i know them but i i, I could i'd be lying if i said i knew more than a few songs uh so they, yeah I, it, it's but it's funny isn't it you know um it's you don't need to be uh so yeah, i certainly wouldn't say they were an influence in terms of um you know in, in my songwriting but often you just find that you you have a similar musical sensibilities to someone else yeah. uh, the, the there's actually the interestingly enough the first because i i got into progressive music quite late and, and the first couple of songs that i wrote for spires um was before 
I'd really got into Opeth, you know. So yeah. it's kind of yeah. So I, I've often kind of thought, you know, with with that maybe me and Michael Ackfeld just have similar <laughs> sensibilities musically. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think yeah, yeah. 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 Also, I I think that you know together with with Wishbone Nash, there's sort of a I don't know why I I feel that way, but like a, a British. Mm. or English sensibility to your music uh, it makes me think of like uh, f- some folky more like Fairport mm. convention and steel yeah, yeah, band yeah. and yeah, stuff yeah. like that and I know I don't know if you're if that is music that's that was in your life growing up or um not so much growing up but again uh yeah the the, the some of that kind of stuff uh, Fairport convention absolutely there's um I've uh, quite a big fan of, of, of some of their stuff um Again, kind of hit and, hit and misses a lot of that kind of stuff, I think. But but uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, and I think as I, you know, I suppose it's a bit cliched, but as I get older, a lot of that kind of stuff is becoming more and more influential on me as well. So hmm. you know, <laughs> um, you tend to look. At, it's, it's strange that you, as, as you get older, or as, as I get older, I think you tend to look further back. Actually, you know, in, in terms of yeah, music, I, like yeah, that, which, I totally yeah. agree. The yeah. same thing happened to me with my interest. You know, mm-hmm. you go, you sort of widen your horizon in in every direction, and mm-hmm. uh, and you look look both forward and and to towards the past. So I, I totally get that. Mm-hmm. But then again, you know, when you decided to start singing and playing the guitar, and you know, did you did you do school? Were you schooled? Were you did you do classes, or how did you start singing uh, instrumental no, singing? To, to be honest, no, no. Um, so singing, first of all, I never had any kind of um, I, I, lessons. I can't really, or... Yeah, no, nothing. I, I, I just, I think, I just started doing it because. It was easier than trying to find somebody else. If that makes sense, mm. and you can kind of tell the first, the first album, the first five album is not got the greatest vocal performance. It's okay, um, um, and it gets better progressively as you'd expect it to, you know. Uh, and then with guitar, um, no, I did, I did, uh, I played the violin a little bit actually before before I picked mm. up the guitar, um, and I did have lessons there. Um, I wasn't particularly. I didn't get particularly far with it, but then with guitar, um, I did have a few lessons actually. Uh, thinking about it, but only, yeah, very few. And um, so, yeah. but I, but I did, but I'm, yeah, but but I have also, I do have quite a musical background in the sense of, um, uh, yeah, I've, 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 uh, in terms of music generally, rather than specifically yeah. on the instruments that I. Than on the guitar, for example. So, yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I said we, we'd get back to Spires, and mm-hmm. and uh, I want to quickly get back to Spires because, of mm-hmm. course, you guys you formed in two thousand and eight, and then you released three albums and an EP over the mm-hmm. span of I would say ten years, right? Because the last yeah. album was in two thousand and eighteen, yeah. mm-hmm. and then in uh, two thousand and nineteen, you announced that you were going on a hiatus or taking mm-hmm. a break or whatever. So, uh, mm-hmm. we, and and you sort of mentioned it already a, a bit about the you know the reasons behind why mm-hmm. this happened with you sort of mm-hmm. wanting to refocus yourself and, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. So let me instead ask then, you know, are there the question everyone wants to <laughs> know, you know, are there plans for anything to happen with Spires going forward? Well, uh there there are um there are rumblings. Yeah, the Frog Space exclusive. Uh, yeah, but, uh, that's what I'm. That's what I'm hinting at here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yes, there, are, yeah. there have been. Um, yeah, we've we've there has been a few discussions recently. I think it and I, I think it's something that uh, we're all kind of wanting to get back to. And and yeah, you know, that's time. Time has now passed, uh, and and it, it once again feels like something that would be exciting to do. And uh, so. I so I, you know, and it's funny actually. I was I was out um, walking earlier today, and you know it's the right time because you you. I was out walking, and I started getting little like you know riff ideas in my head, and I'm thinking, oh, that one, you know. And when that starts happening, you kind of go, okay, well, 
Yeah, maybe it this definitely is, is time. Maybe it's time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I'm, I'm uh, very, very happy, very, very happy to hear that because, of course, uh, Spires is one of my my favorite bands within the progressive, more like extreme progressive music. But uh, but then I also have to ask, you know, you know, will there be? Uh, because I'm I'm sure there are a lot of people who would like to know that now, since your uh, album w- were so well received. Is there plans for a Paul Sadler album number two? Yeah, I think I think I think there has to be. I think uh, I think. Yes, I think definitely, definitely that. Um, I couldn't tell you another exclusive here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I couldn't tell you what, what 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 shape it will take. Um, I'd like to do much more. You know, again, collaborate with people. There is. Yeah. I've got I've got quite some kind of conceptual ideas that I'd l- love to happen. I suppose uh, you know that can be a, a, an outlet for my more pretentious uh, <laughs> creative side. Hmm. Maybe. Um, well, the different, you know. not pretentious, but the different. You know, the things yeah. that yeah. Exactly, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so um yeah no absolutely and in terms of time scale of, of when all this would I, I honestly have no idea you know i've been uh taking I've, I've not really been very musically active since releasing the album um, mm. so um but as i say you start to get that that twitch again of, of yeah, that that creative, Cre- creativity uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. so so it does it, it you know but what, what what it's what it's made me think is is it that putting spires on hold for a while for a couple of years you know it's kind of confirmed to me that it was a, it was the right thing to do because, yeah yeah because now now you know i've released an album it's gone down really well and now i want to do it again you know i think exactly and yeah, the other yeah. members of the the band have have also been you know like you say uh dan it's, has been in, mm. now releasing his album with conum today mm-hmm. and you know the the you have been able to breathe breathe a little bit outside of the spire spire sphere or so to say and and exactly. uh, yeah. yeah well uh, like i said i'm 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 glad to hear it uh, on, a, on on another note i i i want to ask you because i i recently read an article uh, written by fish you know ex marillion oh, yeah. about about uh, the challenges that you know mm. uh, musicians in the uk face mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. uh the the separation from the eu or brexit as it's mm-hmm. known you know of course in the p- pandemic times making it even worse but but uh it was very interesting to see mm-hmm. him line this out i, I don't know as a, a a smaller musician you know mm-hmm. uh and and as a member of a band like spires you know how mm-hmm. how have you thought about or have you looked into how this affects affects you yeah, I mean, I, I read the same article, uh, the same fish thing, and it's makes depressing reading, doesn't it? It's uh, it's not. Yes, uh, yes, sadly it does. Yeah, uh, um, and you know, it's, he he knows a lot more about that than I do. Uh, he's obviously researched it very very deeply. Uh, so he must have. Yeah, add, yeah, I couldn't add too much more to that. But uh, no, to be honest, no, I, I haven't read. I've not. I've not investigated it that much because obviously, any touring plans w- mm. will be. Will we would be unlikely to be doing any this year, for example, uh, yeah, because exactly. it's going to take time. So the situation is very likely to have changed, hopefully for the better. Uh, hopefully, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, by by next year, for example, which where I think would be a much more re- realistic thing to say that you know maybe next year Spires might release an album and, and tour it or something like that. But yeah. um, so. So in a sense, I've not been troubling myself too much uh, from a personal point of view. From what I can follow, it's it's uh, it's completely farcical, and the 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 yeah, the, the, yeah I, I do my, my you know my heart goes out to people like Fish um, and obviously smaller bands as well. But in but in a way, you know, as someone like Fish, obviously, it, it, it kind of has the worst deal because he, yeah, he it's, it's his, his living. You know, yeah, to, it's you his know. living, and and yeah. and he's not a an enormous artist backed by a big label that no. can sort of yeah. So so exactly, like you yeah. say, it's the the worst of both. He's exactly. getting the worst deal in in both both ways. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. I, I'm I. I think I want to, you know, I got a lot of interesting information out of you. I feel, and <laughs> and uh, but but I, I'd like to to end on a more positive note. You know, mm-hmm. here at the Prog Space, and and me in particular, I I, I love the 
to be able to discover and you know present new interesting bands and also mm. some hidden gems and stuff mm. like that and I'm I'm wondering you know what about you do you have some bands or some project artists or whatever that you have been listening to or that you that you feel are could use a bit more attention uh well i mean there's a there's a few bands uh uk bands that i could hugely recommend uh, who are i yeah. think don't necessarily need my help uh, particularly if i'm like luna's call uh, are doing really well with their yeah new album, absolutely yeah um which is just a phenomenal i mean it just blows your mind you know i don't know how I, I can't even imagine the work that's gone into that album. It's uh, it's it's incredible. Uh, so I would I would I would if, um, whilst they're doing quite well for themselves, I think yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of people who, who don't people know people to yeah. yeah. Um, alongside that, this uh, is again a band uh, I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, Ranuk, who are another UK band, and who again also I think it was last year. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was last it's year. A, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They released, they released their their album. Yeah, yeah. Their, their latest album as well, which again is another fine slab of kind of a uh, progressive <laughs> extremity absolutely. Um, yeah absolutely yeah so so those two bands uh and then on, on the lighter end of stuff um i've been really enjoying the, the latest uh, our oceans release uh which is just got oh, some yeah. Good, yeah lovely songwriting um Oh god, I can probably go on forever but but yeah i, I would certainly say luna's call and and, and ran uh, for those who don't know them uh uh really worth checking out and just good example of what what people can do on you know diy bands can do how they exactly, can exactly yeah they can blow or it's, bands where it's just can, as yeah is, exactly it's yeah, just yeah. as good if not mm-hmm. better than some more established bands and mm-hmm. also i feel like you know we mentioned them a couple of times already but uh, i i want to bring up again konom which of course has mm-hmm. Spires uh, uh, guitarist yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan White and yeah. and the drummer from your album Tom exactly, Rice yeah. in there uh, which released yeah, their well, album today yeah, yeah. And, it's, and it's amazing I mean it's going to need time to sink in it's a, it's a real and you're part. on the album as well <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm doing some. I don't think anyone would pick me out. I'm doing some more quiet parts, you know. Um, but um, yeah, you know. But they're the best bits, obviously. You know. <laughs> of, co- of course, yeah, yeah. No objections here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, but it's yeah, it's it's an amazing album. Uh, I, I've only listened through to it once. I listened to it last night actually because uh, I um, just got the. It just came yeah. through in the post yesterday. Just came, and, uh... Yeah. with a glass of whiskey and uh, listen to that and it's yeah it's, it's amazing for those who like their kind of i don't even know how to describe it um it's it's kind of pro- well progressive rock slash metal but it, i feel like yeah. it has a real emotive edge it's almost got a little bit of a it's quite epic it's certainly very epic anyway so um very melodic and and yeah so absolutely conan uh is i feel yeah is, i feel like it's a it's a i, I would when I, what I think about when I listen to that is like there's a meeting between like 80s neo prog and mm. 90s and 2000s prog metal in in a band, you know, as a yeah, yeah, yeah. very interesting yeah. style yeah, there. Described so, it yeah. better than I did. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. 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 And also, once again, just like Spires and with your album, I feel there's a sort of Britishness to it. I don't know how to <laughs> say it really, but there's there's like a, 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 a style there that that I feel is like and which i really enjoy so so Mm -hmm. but yeah thank you so much for for talking to me paul i I found this very interesting yeah thank you very much no it's been it's been great to chat to you and uh yeah no just thank you (laughs) yeah and everyone who's watching who's still watching Mm -hmm. please go and check out uh paul's uh album and get hold of an album because as I understand it, they are running out, right? Last yeah. I heard, you had three, three left. <laughs> yeah, two, uh, yeah, yeah, to, to two now. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, um, so by the time you you see this, this might be the last chance at getting uh, at least a first pressing of the album. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think um, it's it's looking likely that I will uh, re- repress it, but uh, yeah, um, but yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you know. Buy it. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paul. Thank you so yeah. much. No, thank you to you. Yes. Yeah. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. 
Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.